Intro music. <laughs> a star for the ages for Tony Gwynn, number 3,000. They have acquired Eric Johnson and Fernando Tatis Jr. from the White Sox in exchange for James Shield. <laughs> My name is James. My name is Joey. And this is the Brothers Padre. Jamesy, Jamesy, Jamesy. What a fun set of games. We're feeling good about ourselves. Vibes are vibes are vibes are vibing. <laughs> vibes are great. We, we are vibing. We had three really good starts for three uh, for our starting pitchers. Yeah. We took I, two uh, three. I finally saw a home game where they didn't lose. <laughs> so, you know, things are looking up. Things are looking up. <laughs> they, they are. They are. We, we we might have turned a corner, so to speak. Uh, James, how are you doing? How's it going? Uh, I'm currently uh, um, in a room with no air conditioning. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm currently in a garage with no air conditioning. So, <laughs> so you know. Yeah, so we're just we're just a couple of sweaty boys just sweating it out. <laughs> um, but we got to start talking about our Padres a little bit more because you know um, things have been down in this pod about the Padres, and as of today, um, the Milwaukee Brewers today being Labor Day, of course, the Padres don't play today, which is just funny. We don't we have an off day today. Most of baseball played, but the Padres did not. And uh, the Cubs beat the Cincinnati Reds four to three, giving us a full game advantage in the second wild card spot. Um, Good news. We were down. Um, we didn't have the wild card spot. The Reds took it away, and then we came into this weekend against the Houston Astros. Not, I mean, some of us were more positive than other people on this podcast. Uh, you you can check the tape. <laughs> I don't want for you. I was, I was the most positive one. Uh, uh, and I was. I mean, I was. We we. I guess the question I have to ask you, James: Are we back? It feels like we're back. I want. I want to do the full John Wick thing. People keep asking me if I'm back. <laughs> you know what? Yeah, I think I'm back. <laughs> it's i hate saying that because i just like i've i've you and i have watched the past month and a half of baseball for the padres so we know i think i'm has like we, we just we have to see a, one more great series then i'm i'm prepared to say after that one if we sweep the angels definitively we're back i agree like, yeah but if we just split it and we barely win one of them like ah maybe maybe we're not Maybe we're still the same team. <laughs> uh, I, it's been awesome to see real, real production from our lineup. Um, we'll talk about it in the recap episode, but like the second game of the series was exactly the kind of game that a lot more of our Padre game should be. I agree. Lots of two-run homers, Tatis and Machado teeing off. It, it was it was awesome, and then. You know, Sunday's game was a game where we took advantage and we hit mistakes. And there's been plenty of t- games in which we did we were given mistakes, but we didn't know how to hit them. So it was really great to see us turn around on mistakes and hit them on the first inning of the game against the Astros. And it just felt like felt like the first time you know since the, the trade deadline that we actually had an approach. And that approach produced results. <laughs> even even the first game, the game which we lost, felt like the offense still had an approach. And we'll talk about it. I uh, that was the heartbreaker because we should have won that game. Yep. But let's talk about the positives right now because the Potters are back. We are our offense is, looks like it's firing on most of its cylinders. Myers continues to be hot and, and a productive at bat. Tatis has always been Tatis. Cronenworth is looks like he's got out of his funk, and uh, Machado is hit is nine straight games so far. Yep, I believe his hitting streak. Tommy Pham has had two pinch hit hits. 
right? Yeah. What you would want from somebody pinch hitting, you want someone to get a hit. Yep. Uh, Adam yeah. Frazier has had like three hits this over this weekend. That's good. I feels like we're drawing, we're actually drawing walks. I feel, feel like, you know, a lot of the two run homers that happened on Saturday were only there because of walks and just good approaches. It was, it's just been, so, it, it felt for the first time in a long time, I was like, oh, we actually might win a game when we scored early. Because uh, usually what happens when we score early, I'm like, well, this is it. This is the only thing we're going to get. And we have aw- an awful approach and we just make an electrician apprentice look like Nolan Ryan. Like, I, <laughs> you <Yes>. know. <laughs> but it, it, I don't know, man. I, 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 this, I do have a question for you. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because uh, the Cincinnati Reds have lost seven of the last nine. Yep. The biggest problem with them all year has been their starting pitching. Uh huh. They have done nothing. They did pretty much nothing to, you know, increase their starting pitching. They have one of the best offenses in the league with Indio, um, Winkler, Castellanos, and Votto, but they don't have any kind of pitching. Out of the other two teams that are um, coming up, the Cardinals and the Phillies. Which one of those teams do you think has a better chance of passing that we should be more concerned about? Well, before I answer that, I think that if this Padres approach from last weekend is real, then the Astros are a very good team. I, I mean, I have to like preface that. like The Astros are a very good team. They're first in the division, and they have one of the best offenses. That lineup is scary beyond belief. Like, I don't care if they're cheaters or not. Like, it's scary. <laughs> it's a scary lineup. Like, you can't tell me like people are excited to see that lineup come against you. And we won definitively on Saturday and fought back on Sunday. And you know, two bad pitches from Chris Paddock. It was not that. It was a be a clear victory. Oh, right? I agree. I absolutely agree. So when I say that, I mean. I think we're better than if we're play if we play like we did last weekend, we're better than all three of those teams. However, we just mentioned the Reds, the Cardinals, and the Phillies. I think that the Phillies are gonna be the toughest team to play in the playoff because they can just stack Wheeler and Nola. Right? In a one game playoff. That's a tough. That's a tough, right? Um, I don't. I don't really fear any. I mean, we wouldn't face them in a one-game playoff. But I think what we should be worried about long-term, like I think the Phillies are the biggest threat because of Nola and Wheeler, because that they are almost guaranteed wins every time through the rotation, right? And I feel like that's and they're 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 gamers and they can win you two of five games. Um. I think the Phillies are probably the biggest threat. But then again, you know, I don't know. There's the red lineup, if, if it's hitting well, it's it's like they'll score 10 runs a game. <laughs> you know, just, just are... well, I agree. The Phillies are the ones that they have the best all-around team, even though their pull, bullpen isn't the strongest. Right. I, I do think that uh, the Cardinals are the least one, uh, scary ones because in about a week and a half, we face a th- play them three games, and I think we might just knock them out of their chances in that three-game series. I don't, I'm not, here's the thing is, I don't think, apart from Jack Flaherty, I just don't think their starting pitching has it. I just don't think that they're hyper durable. Neither do I. Um, They just happen to be playing in one of the worst divisions in baseball. And they're super streaky offense, right? Like, Paul Goldschmidt is always good in the second half, and he is good now. But Arenado goes through hot stretches and cold stretches, and so... And then you just have you just you need a you need a little bit more for me to feel intimidated. I think because baseball's weird, so like people can get hot and just roll through the rest of the year. I just as it stands right now, I just don't see them as the bigger threat. Um, I still think it's Cincy's fight. I think it's Cincy's and ours fight because Cincinnati has the weakest remaining schedule in all of baseball. This is true. It's up to them to capitalize on it. Not, you know, I mean, it's it's not like it really is. Like, you have to decide. Like, are you going to go into Wrigley Field and get swept? 
that's up to you. Yeah. <laughs> because uh, you have your your two of your outfielders and your first baseman all might get top 10 MVP finishes. <laughs> right, 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 right. Exactly. Like, and you have the uh, the shoe rookie, for rookie of the year. Right. Like, <laughs> it's up to you if you want to lose that or not. Right. I mean, it's, it's like we said about the Padres, like during that week's schedule, it's like it was, it, they decided to not play up to that comp. They did not play, they played down to that competition. And that was not that it was their decision, but just that's, that's what happened, right? And now it's on the Reds. It's like, listen, if you're going to compete with us, you're going to have to steamroll some people and have no regrets about it, you know? You're going to have to hit every single home run possible. And they, they, they definitely can. And the same with the Padres. Like, we don't, we don't go far unless we just have the approach like we did on Saturday, right? I, I must, I've texted you so many times in weeks prior, like, what happened to us hitting home runs? Like, I thought home runs were cool. Like, I thought they were good. I think they're pretty cool. <laughs> they, they are fun. They, they flash the light. It's, yeah. It encourages you to hit them. We have a giant chain with a spinny thing. Uh huh. Why, why don't you guys want to wear it anymore? Yeah, I get it. I get it. It feels like, um, James, are you familiar with um, the the artist Geronimus Bosch? Um, Let's just say I'm not. Okay. So he had this painting, a triptych, uh, which is like a three-paneled painting on, on wood. Um, on the outside panel was it was earth and like the heavens. And inside was a painting known as the garden, uh, the the, what's it called? The Garden of Earthly Delights is the name of the painting. And it depicts the panorama of life. You have left, you have creation, and you have center, you have the the miasmic like confluence of life and people enjoying themselves. And right, you have hell. And I think I've realized this Padre se- season is kind of like that, right? Because in this vista of this beautiful art, you see the possibility. And the expectation is I'm gonna I'm gonna end up on the left side, which is heaven. And sometimes you end up on the right side, <laughs> which is hell. <laughs> And I'm just, I'm just thinking now, like, I'm just happy to be in a painting. You know what I mean? All I'm trying to say, James, is we have to step back a little bit and enjoy the flowers. And enjoy the fact that, like, like we see, we're, we are experiencing like, one of the more talented rosters in all Padres history. And our, and our, and what, what we're mad about is like we're not five games in the second wild card spot. Right, we can't lose focus here. You know, you go back and forth. You go from the pits of despair to the highs, the the, the highs of life. You know, and, and the Padres. I'm, yeah. So all I'm saying is, you're a nerd. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, I I just realized watching them it was like, oh man, this is like it, it's it's one of those things that it was good. To, to be reminded of the fact they can absolutely mash. Oh yeah, against, absolutely. Against good teams. Against right? really good pitchers. And I'm like, oh, yes, we can have all of it. We can feel the lowness and we can feel the highness. And it's like, oh, okay. It's now up to the Padres to be like, hey, you gotta play to that. That that's the benchmark, right? That's the place where you're going to have to hit every series from here on out and never let go yeah um, i agree i absolutely and then and hopefully uh jay cronworth's walk-off home run is the spark this team needed much like slam diego was last year to keep the offense going i think they understand a playoff race all of our pitchers for the most part are healthy and i think i think we're gonna make a serious run at this joseph I hope so, because I have lots of vacation days ready for many playoff games. <laughs> uh, James, I cannot be more elated this weekend. I, uh, I, my happiness is too much tied to the San Diego Padres, and sometimes that's great. Sometimes the past few months and a half has not been great. But this weekend has been great. Uh, but we need to talk about something that's, that, even though it's been great, we need to talk about uh, something that's not been great throughout this weekend and the past few weeks, specifically not been great. And that, of course, is Eric, Eric, Hosmer. Hosmer. Eric Hosmer. 
Do you want to start to? Uh, this is just so complicated because we want to talk about Eric Hosmer because the discourse is at a fever pitch. Is that is that a fair statement? It, it is. I. I can't remember a time as Padre fandom more universally dislike of a player. It's bad. It, it, it is really bad. Even when, like, I try, I, I'm trying to think because even I, Matt Kemp is like a quarter of this. Yes. Right. Like, but not even the full of it. It's like a quarter of this, right? Y- yeah, because and you, you hate him. Matt- you hate him after he left. Not even when he played for you. And things like even Matt Kemp, when he was struggling with us, we did not build a team around Matt Kemp like we've built around <laughs> Eric Hosmer. <laughs> and the, we, Eric Hosmer was signed by the Padres because he has playoff experience. He's a good clutch hitter. And he has not, and, and he was at the time he's, was a very. He supposedly won four gloves, four gold gloves, <laughs> supposedly. <laughs> <laughs> he is currently, as all of the records stand, the worst defensive first baseman in Major League Baseball. A league that includes Daniel Vogelbach in that position. <laughs> Daniel Vogelbach what was, was was signed as a Brewer because he looked like a beer barrel. Like I'm not kidding. That's why he was signed. He was signed because he, he was like, "Hey, we gotta find the most beer barrel looking person for the Brewers." And Daniel Vogelbach was like, "Hey, that's me." You know, you, you don't even have to like. He could wear just a plain white jersey and a plain hat. And so, what team does he play on? Brewer. He yeah, just he's... looks like he's a brewer. Yeah. <laughs> Not a very athletically built person, but he had a walk up grand slam two nights ago. So, what do I know? <laughs> so. Exactly. <laughs> so, so the problem with Eric Hosmer is a the entire. It seems like all of San Diego wants him gone. Uh, and we, you, you and I have had our own uh, conversations about how much we dislike his play. Mm-hmm. This, the Friday game against the Houston Astros. Oh my goodness. His defense literally cost us four runs. <laughs> so bad, dude. We lost, That game we lost, what, what did we lose? Uh, six to three? Uh, yeah. Yep. So if he was in the defense on in defense, we would have won that game. <laughs> he uh Jake Arietta was pitching I thought pitching all right. Hosmer Pitch, makes pitching as well as he could have been, which was it was good. It was fine. Yeah. Yeah. Any other team but the Astros, I think he would have had a better um record against. Mm-hmm. But Hosmer made a couple miscues. Blows a throw by, which was it would wasn't the cleanest a tough play. Throw, it was a tough play too, but it bounced out of his glove, and they called the error on Jay Cronworth who threw the ball. It hit the it heel of his Kim. glove. It was also on Kim. It was on Kim. Yeah, I thought um, for sure Cronworth. Anyways, the ball hit the heel of his glove and bounced away. That was uh, if it hits the first baseman's glove. Oh, you're talking about you're talking about the play. You're talking about the bounce play. The play that led to the three and homer. Yeah, that one he didn't cover first base in time. Well, I'm talking about the one that Jay Cronworth threw and he blew it. That was on Saturday. That was Saturday, right? There's and three on, plays that we've mentioned. On <laughs> Friday, where he caught his four runs. Right, right. My bad. Sorry. There was a simple one where he Hassan Kim makes a di- a great play. Picks up to throw it, and Hosmer's not staying on first. It was the weirdest play because it's just like he had plenty of time, and maybe he thought Arietta should have covered first, maybe. But the play is is Hasung playing deep right and deep in the shift. Hasung, um, the ground ball comes the right side. Hosmer tries to get it and like oh I'll get of Kim get it and he backpedals to first but then stops like two feet away from first base and then Hasong waits for him to like get in place throws and then Cosmer's still not at first base and then he catches the ball and kind of like shuffles back to first the ball 
beat so the weird. runner by four, three or four steps. Yep. And just because he had to take two steps backwards, he yeah. And there was that play. Then there was a line drive at him, which was a simple short hop. He could have any other first baseman would have grabbed it, and that led to three runs. It would. It. Uh, yeah, and I think, and then the the, the thing I th- think that was the most telling thing is on Sunday. What was it? The bases were those two men on base, and they pinch hit for him. Yeah, pro far pinch hit for him. Yeah, and I think more or less it was also a, a defensive replacement. Oh, yeah. as well, uh, there's Eric Hosmer. There are only two players, regular playing players. That have worse defensive ratings according to fan graphs in all baseball. And who are those guys? Jorge Soler, um, outfield for the Braves, and Miguel Sano, first baseman for the Twins. Um not good. Not good at all. Um so he is the worst defensive first baseman in the National League. Oh yeah, he can take that title definitively. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and you could you can make the case just by like um, other defensive metrics. He's the worst defensive first baseman in all baseball because he has he's like very low range, um, routinely bounces, drops scoops that should be scooped. You know, the only reason why mm, Jake Cronworth will not win a Gold Glove or Manny Machado win a Gold Glove this year is because Eric Hosmer's at first. Yeah, a tough pill to swallow, but it's true. <laughs> it's and then also like Tingler um, batted Hosmer fifth for like two weeks, and you know there's a on Friday the bases were loaded, struck out like didn't do any like struck out. There were six ball. There were, he was throwing six balls. He swung at three of them, and he struck out. He struck out on a ball that was two feet above his head. Yeah. And I think it was like that that pitcher threw six. None of them hit the strike zone. No. Not a single no. one of them did. Yeah. I, uh, I'm, it's, it's complicated because like he can hit the ball. He can actually hit. And on Sunday, he got a couple hits. And when he decides to lift... He can hit 450 fit home runs. Yeah. Like he has power. It's just like <laughs> he decides to just either not be great at great approach, uh, be a bad defender, or it's just like, I don't know. I, I don't know what it is. Whatever it is, it's just, it, I think that. It looks like the Padres are finally like, hey, we can't just play this guy every day just because he has a contract. But you can't. Agreed. You can't, right? Profar plays a – Profar and Cronenworth are better first basemen. Profar, Cronenworth, and Myers are better first basemen than and Hosmer. I agree. I absolutely agree. And Myers is red hot. So guess who gets – This is. I think he gets more starts at first. But Myers has to go back to first, right? Like if he's this hot and Profar stays hot, well, guess what? It's going to be a Profar, Grisham, Tatis outfield, and then Myers is at first. But then again, Profar plays just a good defensive first base, right? Right, yeah, what, better than Myers does. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I, it, it's complicated because like we like, I mean, we always want who, whoever's on a Padre to succeed. Like we want them to succeed, right? Obviously. Yes, That's the, we're a Padre fan. We want them to succeed. It's just uh, Eric Hosmer hasn't succeeded as a Padre. Is that fair? Is that a fair statement? I don't know about a fair statement. It might be a fair statement though. He has not succeeded to the level of money they're paying him. Yes, he has not succeeded like a person that's getting paid twenty million a year. Yes. Um, let me look at um, his Baseball Reference page. I don't know why. I'm just going to be sad, but I'm going to do it anyway. Um, yeah, as a Padre, his only positive war season was last year. So mostly he's played as a below replacement level player as his time as a San Diego Padre. 
He's currently sitting at zero war, so he's exactly uh, like an average baseball player, <laughs> which isn't what we pay him all that money to be. No, not at all. I, here's what's really upsetting. Will Myers has gone through this before with the Padres fandom in, in some way, right? Yeah. Where he struggled, you know, and he just was in a slump and, you know, and, you know, he doesn't, he's not the kind of guy that wants to be the front runner of a team. Been long discussed by many people, but man, that dude can put in an at bat. When he knows, when he feels comfortable up there, he can really, he can put it in that bat and he has real power. And then you see, you see, it, it feels like it was a like clockwork, like I think it was Friday or game before that. Will Myers cups up and he just gives up a hell of a bat, just like six, seven, eight pitches, and he just gets the walk. You're like, wow, this is good. And then the Hosmer comes up and he just grounds out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or strikes out on three pitches in the dirt. You're like, what are we doing? <laughs> and like this, Will Myers made the adjustment. Will Myers has tried, and I, I'm not saying Hosmer hasn't tried, but like, we are in no place to find out if someone can turn it around, right? The Padres want to keep winning and to go to the playoffs. They cannot do it with Hosmer starting every game. No way. No way. Unless he somehow turns a switch in his head and just becomes, you know, Ted Williams up there at the plate, maybe. But as of right now, if the Padres are serious about going to the playoffs, he cannot be our everyday first baseman. No, I don't think so. And he can lead the team. Everyone thinks he's just a great – all the players think he's the best team leader. He can lead from the bench. Yeah, I don't – if if – yeah, I don't know. You can't. You can't be a negative and a team leader. You can't be a negative. Uh, you can't be a negative on the field and at bat, and then say, "Well, I'm a good team leader, so I should get every day at bat." Right? Like, no. Like, you just kind of stink, that dude. Like, it, and yes, he can be clutch. Yes, he does have the ability to come with big hits, but. He also has the ability to just not get the third out and a ground out. So this this is the problem. Yeah. yeah. If he was a Gold Glove first baseman, yeah. we could handle his struggling at struggle at bats. Yes. Yes. If he was a phenomenal hitter, we could handle his bad defensive plays and defense. Right. But you can't be both. Yeah. It, it, it you just you just can't you can't have a an iffy hitter. And an iffy defensive player. Not when Jerickson Profar is currently above war, and Myers is above war, Fam is still above war. The, there's still players, yeah, yeah. <laughs> options to be had for him not to be at on 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 first. And in Hassan Kim, not the best hitter right now, certainly the best defensive infielder we have. Might be the best defensive infield. Might be the best defensive infielder in all of baseball. And yeah, I, and I, I think literally like the stats will say, in playing three separate positions has saved more runs than any other infielder who who have started every day at one position. Exactly. Right. You can have him at short and uh, Cronenworth at first. Right. That this these are, and you're not losing. You're you're, you're losing a better at bat possibly but you're gaining a significantly better defensive infield because despite what anybody wants to say on Twitter, I don't think Fernando Tatis Jr. is coming back to the infield this year. They've clearly made that adjustment. I, he's not coming back to the infield this year. If, and if we want to stay in the run, running, we have to keep the MVP healthy. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, that's a good, a good topic too, because like that does relate to this. Because the, I, I don't what I think I'll, I'll say one criticism to Tingler is that he doesn't quite flex the positional flexibility as much as he probably should. Right, Chris Taylor for the Dodgers will play two to three positions 
every game. Exactly, yeah. And now we're like, oh, maybe maybe we'll just like... Tingler's a very like, he's in or he's out. He's out. When it's like, no, Jerks and Profar, first base. And like, I, there's a world in which it goes like this. Profar and Kim, Cronenworth and Machado, the infield. Late in the game, we substitute Myers. I mean, substitute Will. I mean, sorry, not Will or Myers, but Eric Hosmer, right? And then what happens? Ha, we, we sub out Ha Song and we move over ha, um, Profar to second. Like, there, there's so much flexibility that, that Tingler doesn't do. And it, we have such flexibility. Like we said, you've listed all those guys that are hot. They can all play multiple positions. So we're not in a bind. We don't, we're not forced to start hosmer at, at first every game and we have and especially if, if, if there's one immovable object in one position it's just tatis now because we can't we can't afford to lose them you're absolutely right we can't just like but but th- th- yeah, th- there's yeah. the thing there's a the thing tatis can play and has played center field and right field and yep. he plays both positions fairly well every other t- player we have on our team can play at least two positions yep Including even, our catchers, even Machado can play shortstop. Like let's and, not forget that. And, like and don't, yeah. don't don't go wrong. He can be in the outfield as well. Yeah, I mean he he made an out. He made he's made several outfield plays all throughout this year and last year. <laughs> like yeah, yeah. he can be. He is a Gold Glove thir- third baseman, a Gold Glove shortstop. Yeah. The only person we have on our team that cannot play multiple positions is Eric Hosmer. Yeah. <laughs> so crazy. Oh my goodness! I mean, uh, Profar has played every position in the outfield mm-hmm. he, this year. He's played second base and he's played th- first base. Yep. Cronenworth has played every position in the infield this year. <laughs> Kim has played second, short, and third. <laughs> it just it it. <laughs> and the thing is, like, if he was a still a Gold Glove first baseman, fine. We can we'll put ha- hit him. Have him bat eighth, and and we'll just okay. He's up to bat. He won't be the best. If he was hitting like Ted Williams, all right. We just have to make our make sure our, our infielders throw a better pitched uh, ball to him because he's going to drop ninety percent of them. <laughs> both things, it can't be both. It can't. Just just no way. Yeah. Anyways, uh. I mean it it it's frustrating to watch because it's so like. I know as like fans, we always sensationalize every single moment, but it is also like there's this point where like Eric Hosmer, when when he's hitting well, was always an okay to and subpar first baseman. He always, he always has been as a Padre. And as a fan, you're like, like, we're not crazy, right? We're not like you kind of like look, look at each other like we're not crazy. Eric Cosmer is not playing well, right? And then you just don't see the you don't see the adjustments. You don't see the playing time adjustment. So it, I think now with this weekend, I mean, Profar's usage and his late substitution, I think we're going to see. I think I think this means that what we kind of hope for, which is that Hosmer is not going to be get the most playing time until until he prove himself he's worth it. Um, and which just stinks to play. It stinks to say for someone who makes so much money to say, hey, you know, you're not going to play every day because even though we pay you $20 million, you're just as good as any other first baseman, average first baseman in baseball. Yeah. And so that's a horrible, that's, that's a tough pill to swallow. Like, I don't know. That's just rough. Just rough, James. But we want to win a pet. We want to yeah. win yeah. the National League championship and then go to the World Series this year. We cannot do that with somebody who sucks at both things <laughs> for a player to do. Yeah, I I am very okay if he becomes like a pinch hit specialist, early game first baseman that type. I think that's that's a fine role for him, right? Um. Yeah, but you just can't level of play. You bring to the defense is the most egregious, and you're absolutely right. We cannot have someone like that if we plan to go far in the playoffs. So, 
But how 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 um, cool is it that we're talking about the playoffs again? I know it was. I mean, listen, we were on the right side of the Garden of Earthly Delights. <laughs> <laughs> we were in the dark place, <laughs> you know. And now we're we're veering towards the left, and I, I'm very happy. I'm very very happy that we're a game ahead. I mean. Thankfully, the Reds decided to stink because they're once again their starting pitching is not great, and that's, that's been their downfall every loss of theirs. Right? They just have not had a great starting pitching core, and um, but we've played very good baseball. I'm very excited. Um, it's still going to be a tough, tough rest of this month, right? It's gonna no, be- this, 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 we're not we're not out of the woods. We have to battle a lot of games this this month. But we're, we're, if if we can keep what we, we we've seen the last couple games, our starting pitching is pitching well. Chris Paddock pitched probably the best game I've ever seen him pitch. Mm-hmm. As far as not, I mean, he didn't strike anybody out, but he was dominant. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, that's the way. That's how we roll. That's how we go far, right? We have to. We have, this weekend is the is the recipe, right? Good approaches. Yeah. Good starting pitching, and we just that that will ride us far against good good teams. Um, but I'm I'm stoked about it, man. I'm I'm now like I'm thinking about October again, which I don't I, I wasn't. If you ever asked me last Friday, I was like, "Are we going to playoffs?" I'm like, I mean, no, but <laughs> I mean, <laughs> but now I'm like, probably, yeah, <laughs> you know? exactly. Uh, um. Yeah, what I mean, what so it's now looking like some version of the Dodgers and Giants in the in the wild card. Like, is there one that scares you more now? Like, For I feel like two game playoff two game two two months ago, I, I would have given you a different answer, but now I have a now I have a now I have a different answer now. Yeah, I think the Dodgers scare have always scared me the most. The Giants are starting to finally show wear and tear. Mm-hmm. The, all their starting pitchers have gotten hurt, and all the hitters are starting to slow down. Yeah, I, I think I I think I would rather I don't know. I think a few couple months ago I, I probably have picked the Giants, but now I want the Dodgers in the one game series. Um, I think the Padres have. And this is completely like not analytics based. None of this is based in like hard data. It's just me, my observations, which have always steered me correct in my life. Yep. 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 Everyone, I talked to all my friends. They all say that. Um, it seems like the Padres know the Dodgers better than, than they know the Giants. And I feel like that knowledge is better in a one game series than a five game series. And that might be the most like sports dumb person talk in all the world. But I feel like we always play better against the Dodgers. And I feel like I'd rather play, I'd rather figure out how to play better in a longer series than figure out to play better in the middle of one game. But to be fair, 70% of our giant play time is still ahead of us. Whoever wrote this schedule. Right. Had us pl- we, we have um, the next, what, 20 games. We're playing the giants nine times. It's a lot. It's a lot of times. Let me look at it. Yeah. We have a four game set in the middle of next week against the giants. Three games the week after that. Then three games at the end. The very last series is three games. 10 times. Yep. And we play them a grand total of 19 times. So, yeah, over half of our times are in the next month. So we haven't actually seen them as much as we've seen the Dodgers. Yeah, we, we see the Dodgers two more times. Um, we'll see them next weekend in L.A., or this weekend in L.A., and then um, two and a half weeks after that. Wild. Yeah. Wild stuff. It's going to be a wild month, dude. It's going to be a wild month. I mean, but I'm looking more, more forward to it now than I have been. Yeah, it's true. As long as Machado, Tatis, and Myers stay hot, we're we're doing good. And as long you know. as Musgrove, Snell, Arietta, and Paddock can give us competitive um, pitching performances, and if Darvish can start pitching healthy, I think we're good. Yep. James, anything else to add before we sign off? No, 
Yeah, I only made one weird illusion this episode. I feel like that's, a, that's like that's like a high mark for me. I normally do two or three. You know, I only mentioned one piece of art that no one's heard of. <laughs> I, I, I usually it's a musician that nobody cares about. Listen, I'm a treasure trove of information about musicians no one cares about or art no one has ever seen. So I'm I'm the life of every party. <laughs> yeah. I can tell. Yep. Yep. <laughs> James, we're on Spotify, we're on Apple Podcasts, we're on YouTube. You probably listen to us on YouTube. Thank you so much for your listenership. We're on Twitter at Brothers Padre. James, and until next time, go Padres. Go Padres. And there it is. Oh, doctor, you can hang a star on that, baby. People keep asking me if I'm back. <laughs> you know what? Yeah, I think I'm back. <laughs>